My name is Kevin Heinz. I'm Content Manager and Senior Editor at WordVice, SA Review. And today I want to talk about some of the graduate school admissions materials you will need. So we're going to talk in depth about Statement of Purpose. Who here has written an SOP before? Have you ever written a Statement of Purpose? Okay. So some of you, hello. So you might know about, about you know, the, the trials of writing it, how long it takes, and what you have to put it in. I will also talk about personal statement, which is not quite the same as statement of purpose, and letter of recommendation. So if you'd like, you can sort of follow along here, and on the back, we have a little more information about uh, when we talk in detail about each essay. So first, let's uh, take a look at the checklist here. A checklist of necessary graduate school documents. Um, you can see uh, there's many things here we'll talk about in a minute. Then I'll talk about how to write the SOP and how to write a personal statement and what you need to do to get your letters of recommendation. So you can see um, some of the required graduate school documents, application forms, grades and transcripts, statement of purpose, personal statement, Letters of recommendation usually require two or more, and then additional documents. Um, sometimes the university will request um, maybe three or four letters of recommendation. So, and maybe there might be an extra graduate uh, admissions essay for a particular university. So the rule I want to keep, I'll probably say five times tonight, is always check your university website and check for as many details as possible. Don't assume one university will be the same as others. But probably you will apply to more than one university. Okay, so we're going to talk about these three things tonight. Statement of purpose, personal statement, and letters of recommendation. So I want to go through the statement of purpose as if you, ne you don't know what it is. You've never seen it. Because um, it's very, very important. So it's a component of applicants profile to enter graduate programs. You should always be positive, thorough, and detailed in this essay, and you will demonstrate your personality, your interests, your background, your abilities. Okay, every major U.S. graduate school requires a statement of purpose. So we see a lot of essays uh, in our editing work that where students have sort of thrown their statement of purpose together, like it's application or just, you know, talking about their self. It should be about you, it should be about your biography, but it should also include a lot of important details and structure, and it should be very high-level writing. So, let's talk about what it should include. So, as I said, it should include academic biography. Biography is like a narrative of yourself, right? So throughout this SOP, Statement of Purpose, you'll be talking about yourself as if it were a story about you. But you'll need to include some key things. The history of your academic career, how you prepared yourself for a graduate program, um, your reason for interest in the program. It's very important that you show how your passions and your in interest led you to this particular program. Um, specific academic professional goals, so what do you want to do in the future? And last, you always want to show why you are a good fit. That means why the program is good for you, but also you are really good for the school and for the program. So it's, it's a happy relationship. So, uh, as I said, you want to have the strongest possible writing. It's not a research paper, right? So it's going to be more personal in tone. A research paper is very uh, passive in tone. It's very objective. Uh, this, you can put a lot of your personality into, right? So you're going to use active voice, first person perspective. Use a lot of I, me, we, uh, even though you're talking about uh, complex graduate level issues, you still want to show yourself through this SOP all the time. And as I also mentioned, it takes a lot of time to put this together. So my advice would be to treat this like you would a research paper where you don't just do it the few days before and then send it to us, 
<laughs> because, in fact, our job is not to write the paper for you, and in fact, we don't know how, because you have to put your own interests and your own background, your own um, life story in this. So our job will be to, to polish it and make it you know, as presentable grammar and style as possible, but it's your job to spend time um, and maybe try to find friends who can help you, or teachers, better yet, find a mentor or a teacher to help you. And you'll probably do two or three drafts before you uh, submit the SOP. Because it's that important. There's so many students applying. Let's see. So there's some formatting, require, formatting requirements. Usually it is about one to two pages, uh, which means 1,000 to 2,000 words. You will use single space, standard font. And not all schools require this, but you will write your full name and your field of study on top of each page. Now, this last thing will be something I have repeated already. Check your university website for the specific requirements. Um, if you send, if, if the website asks for double spaced and you send single, it's a reason for them to throw it away, right? If you use uh, some strange font or some strange page margins and the school says don't do that, it's a reason for them to throw it away. So don't put all the hard work into your paper and then make a formatting mistake, okay? Okay, so we'll talk about the steps you need to go through to write this paper. Step one, before anything else, gather everything you need. Transcripts, major papers, exam scores, publications, resumes, honors, awards, anything you have that you can put in front of you that when you start to write it, you know the details of it. You know, you're not just trying to remember Oh yeah, I have an award somewhere in my room. Hmm. I don't remember exactly, but I can write a little about it. So get the more detailed you details you put into these essays, the better uh, view of you the admissions faculty will have. <clears throat> so again, you can use any relevant academic or professional content. And I know uh, probably a few of you. Many, many grad students spend time after school working. So I don't know your history. Maybe you're working now or you're in school. If you're working, you definitely want to talk about what you've been doing in the meantime. right? You don't want to leave any holes in the timeline. So you want to include um, school activities, but also job activities. So if you've done research, uh, thesis, related field work, or lab experience. And these are all school related, but you also want to write about your job. So if you're trying to go to a, a fashion school in the US or a dentistry or any school, and you've been working as an intern, or you've been working in an unrelated field, you want to talk about why you went into that field. Why were you out of school for two or three or four years? Okay. They want to know that. Okay, step two, after you've gathered everything in front of you, you want to create an outline using these four key essay components. There's actually a lot more than four things to write about, but these are the most important <clears throat> for your essay. So you'll have an introduction, uh, you'll talk about your interests and motivations. Now you won't only discuss the interests in the introduction, you'll put it throughout, but uh, you need a strong introduction for this because it's the first thing that the admissions will read. You need to include a summary of your undergraduate and previous graduate activity. So some of you will find you have a lot to write about. You've done many, many things. And you can make sort of a list and put it into a story. And some of you, maybe you didn't do that many things. So you can write more details about the little activities you've done. So you can talk about an internship in greater detail and how it built you up as a, as a student and got you ready for writing the school. You're going to include a discussion about <clears throat> recent and current activities. So again, talk about what you've been up to in the last few months. Don't, it, like, if you've been out of school for a couple of years, don't 
don't skip over those two years, right? And you're going to go into detail about your interests and future plans. So goals are very important. We see a lot of papers that just say, I really want to enter <clears throat> your program because I want to be uh, an engineer. And that's not enough, right? You need to tell them what you want to do in the future. If you have a dream to be uh, to build skyscrapers in Dubai, that would be really interesting because it's specific. If you don't have that specific of a dream, at least talk about of what you might fantasize about doing. Because that really shows that you have passion, not just, I want to go to grad school, right? <laughs> I want to go to school, I, hate, I don't want to work anymore, I want to go to school. They definitely don't want to feel that from you. Okay, so as far as the organization goes, uh, I want to give you some guidelines that we found at Cornell University. So this is sort of, think of this as an outline. It's not exactly what you have. You don't have to write like this, but it's a good way to structure your SLP when you're writing it. So you want to include a hook that demonstrates your passion for the field. A hook is you know, that beautiful introduction that says, Throughout my life, I have always been passionate about farm animals. I have done, and it's, it's like you're t telling about who you are through your passion, right? You also, in your introduction, want to mention the school's name. I haven't written this here, but you want to state your reason for writing the, <clears throat> the letter. So, I'm, that's why I'm interested in applying to Stanford University's agriculture program. Right? That will be at the beginning, too. But the better the hook, the, the, the more that the admissions will be interested in you. Next, oh, these are by paragraph, by the way. So in this SOP we're going to look at, this is like first paragraph, second paragraph. So next, you want to transition into your background. What did you do to get you into that, uh, that position? Third paragraph, you want to describe your academic background. So. You should list specific classes, right? specific <coughs> classes you've taken. Give the names of the class. Give the names of the professors. Uh, if they're well known, you can name drop, right? But you don't want to just say, I went to Seoul National University and there's this awesome, famous professor. If you took a class with that person, show how they helped you, uh, talk about why that class inspired you, how you grew from that specific class. So details. Um, in paragraph four, you can include extra curricular activities. This can include internship, lab experience, um, fellowships, or job work. Uh, if you have any publications, if you've published research, I mean, most incoming grad students don't really have publications. If you do, Definitely put them. If you don't, skip it and focus more on the details of your other activities. And uh, paragraph seven, we will see how this author explains uh, problems in their background. Okay, this is actually isn't included in this SOP, but we see many students who want to explain why did that, what happened in your life that you weren't in school for ten years or something. You know, some students wait a long time before going back. Um, I was out of school for about uh, six years before I went to grad school, and so a lot of my, uh, I didn't write an SOP, but admissions letter was explaining how this course you know, is going to put me in this place, and what have I done that's made me ready for, for grad school. Um, so they want to know what, what you've been up to. And last, why you've chosen a specific grad school. So really, you really want to uh, tell the admissions officers why you've chosen their school and not another school. What is it specifically about their school? And be careful not to write just your institution, your school. If you use the school's name. So if you're, I know that's really convenient, like a resume. If you're writing a resume, you apply to 10 places and, uh, and you don't, maybe you don't change, you just change a little bit. Like, I want to work at a, B, C. But you want to tailor this SOP to that school. So maybe do some research about it before you send your, your SOP. Okay, 
So let's look at some specific instructions for Stanford University. We've just chosen Stanford because our SOP is going to be Stanford SOP. So read it together, if you will. Read it with me. It says, describe in your statement of purpose your reasons for applying to the proposed program. So um, look for this in, in the SOP we're going to read. And also you can see if you can find it in the key components. So reasons for applying, that might be interests, motivations. Uh, preparation, that might fall under previous graduate activity. What have you done? Okay, interests, right? So there's a big focus on passion because you're not just a robot attending their school, you're a real person that is going to do something and, uh, at their school and represent their university. Future career plans. Where do we see that in the components? Future goals and plans, right? And other aspects of your background and interest, which may aid the admissions committee in evaluating your aptitude and motivation. This is just fancy speak for tell us anything you would need to tell us that would make us accept you. So if you have anything um, special about your past, anything that happened, you want to include it. And at the bottom, as we noted before, there are th the formatting guidelines. So this is the, the entire uh, SOP instructions on their website. The formatting instructions are like one-third of the entire page. And you may just be like, okay, that's not important, right? I can ignore that. But please don't ignore it. Definitely do not ignore it. Because we get a lot of SOPs uh, in our... I've edited a lot of SOPs, statements of purpose, that have like random formatting. And sometimes we don't know what the school asked for, so we don't know how to format it for them, for that school. So you have to you know, pay attention to that. Okay, so let's look at the statement of purpose. Um, it's pretty long, but I want you to, as you go through here, maybe you can write down some key phrases there's a lot of, I'll, I'll point to some actual language that helps organize and draw the reader to show, uh, that shows the reader what you're doing in the essay. And you can also follow along on, um, on the components and maybe here and see if everything's covered. Now, I don't know, they could be logged. Are they going to have a chance to have this PPT or I mean, they can write as many notes? Okay, it's a one shot chance. If you need, <laughs> notes you can maybe record or uh, write down as much as possible. Okay, so in the first paragraph, we have what we call our hook. And you'll notice this author doesn't really write anything that fascinating, but they start off by you know, saying that their lifelong interest in the field is motivated them, right? So they use powerful language right away. Due to my lifelong interest in the field and upon careful consideration of this institution's merits, I'm hereby applying to Stanford University. So they've already talked about their passion, their interest, um, and why the school is good. They've considered the, the school uh, deeply, and then they've mentioned the school's name, and they go on to say the specific program. This is in the first sentence. So whereas some students will say, they'll tell a, a nice story about themselves. You don't want to spend too much time on that story, right? This student has chosen to s sort of put it all together and say, um, yeah, I, it's like a trumpet. This is where I want to go to school because of my passion. So then they go on to give more particulars. So they're showing a lot of details, right? Theoretical computer science, design and analysis, da 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 right? So this is the first paragraph. They've hooked the reader by telling them, I want to focus on this exactly in your program. So, we talked about paragraph two is interests and motivations. Segway, you're going to move into your background and show your interests and motivations. So, look at the first, par the first sentence of each of these paragraphs as like a mini thesis. Right, a main, it's a main idea. So the entire paragraph is going to be uh, supporting your main idea. 
So you, if they use the term interest, right? Interest and motivation. This is from Stanford's SOP. This is what the student does. They basically follow the rules of the SOP and they use the word interest. So automatically the, the, the faculty can tell what this paragraph is. So I suggest using that similar language. Um, again, this interest has only grown throughout my years in school and high school. So they won't talk too much about their, uh, their young years, but they're, building, they're showing their passion, right? They're showing where this came, passion came from. Uh, let's see. So having represented India at International Mathematical Olympiads on two occasions, I have been exposed to elements of discrete mathematics. And this goes into what they've done, I guess, before undergrad. So this is like their background, their story. Um, they've also done intensive training programs and they were put through the Olympiads. Uh, so they've mentioned the details that you might not even think about. Maybe you did something in high school that was really related to, maybe if you're, again, your major is design, maybe you built a bag or made like a presentation that started you off in your passion for passion. So you can use that, even in passing, as they have here. Okay, paragraph three. Um, summary of the academic background. So, they start again. What's the first sentence? My exposure to computer science began after I entered the, I'm guessing that's the university name. So this is going to be about their exposure. And you can see a lot of, a lot of uh, details about courses and domains, computer science, theoretical computer science, discrete, discrete structures, data structures, they're using a lot of uh, course names and domain names in here. But they're also tying it together with their passion. So let's see. Um, so, I have found the theoretical computer science most intellectually satisfying and stimulating. And then they go on to list other courses have been my favorites. So they're not just saying, I have taken A, B, C, D, E, right? And this year I took discrete structures, and then the next year, I took data structures and algorithms. And then in the third year, I took theory of computation. Oh, it's really boring, right? So they're kind of like, boom, 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 boom. I took all of these classes. This was my favorite because, because I find the problems in theoretical science particularly appealing because of the flavor of abstract mathematics that I love. So you have a lot of deep, a lot of kind of Boring details, but then explanation of why it was very interesting to this person. Let's see. Okay, paragraph four. I'm going to talk about the things that you've been doing recently. So we'll get we'll go a little faster through these, right? but but I think this is good to look very closely. Um, and I have a feeling that the school actually put this SOP together. I'm not sure, but you know, as something that they want you to. Look at. So if you look at the school's website, they might offer sample um, papers like this for you. Anyone take a picture? <laughs> so recent activities, developments, they start off with recently, right? But here, they don't talk about their activities, they talk about developments in the field, which is really impressive, I think. So they say recently, a lot of exciting developments have taken place in the field of approximation algorithms. So I think they've gone from the level, recently I've been doing a lot of work here to, to instead talking about, having a discussion about the interesting and new things in that domain. So think about what a professor who has been studying this, what, whatever, math for 20 years is more interested in. Are they more interested in you and like, oh, you're... That's cute, you've done this, this. Yeah, they want to know that, but if you can move that to a discussion about what's actually happening in the world of whatever you're interested in, that's, more, that's higher level, right? I think they'll appreciate that. And they might want to talk to you in class. They might want you to be, a, they might want to mentor you if, you, um, go, if you're a graduate student there. So let's see, um, I'm off topic here. So, um, they, they do, let's see, 
they do move from a discussion about developments uh, in the field to talking about what Stanford has been doing in this field. So here they've done what they've mentioned the, the names, specific names of the professors and why the school is uh, important in this, uh, for, for this student, for this reason. So then they talk about themselves. Lastly, actually, uh, I have read about these results in the course of my seminar, my summer training at the Tata Institute. And I find them very fascinating and intend to work with problems of a similar, similar nature. So instead of starting with me and my, myself, they, they talk about the conversation and where they fit into that conversation. I think that's very clever. And Stanford probably looks for the, those uh, clever students. Okay, fifth paragraph. Let's just look at the language. Um, so extended focus on interest and connection with this graduate program. So here, by the first sentence, I'm convinced that I should pursue a career in research and teaching. You can see, just looking through this, there's no more details about courses. There's not really any technical language that I can see. And there's no professors. So there, this is where they kind of go into detail about uh, what, what they want to do and in very personal and you don't have to follow this exact structure, paragraph by paragraph, but you should really pay attention to the first sentence and, and, and what it's doing, how your, your um, SOP is structured in general. Hello. Let's see, so um, they use key language. My few experiences with teaching um, have evoked favorable responses and I've been and have been thoroughly enjoyable. So they we, we thought they were just interested in math, but now they're showing how they they want to apply math to teaching. They want to teach. So here this applicant talks about their more research recent research experience. So my summer training at TIFR, they gave a specific uh, name has given me the experience of working in an organization oriented towards research. So, they've given the name and they've connected it to research, what is what they will do at Stanford too. Um, recently, they've been doing, they've interacted with the theoretical computer science group. And you can see there's, they use a lot of different language. They don't say, I took this class I did this, they, they say it in a different way. Um, my interaction has taught me. They don't just say, I interacted with the science group. My summer training has given me the experience. So they're sort of varying the language on, on a more stylistic level. So think about that when you write, I mean, even when you look at one paragraph, does it sound the same? Are the sentences the same length? You don't want them, you don't want it to be boring like just reading the same style of sentence over and over. You want to vary your sentences too. Okay, and this is the final paragraph. <laughs> I think so. Okay. Oh no, there's a, there's a conclusion too. Okay, so how this graduate program will help further the student's interest? Um, this is just the good fit part, right? This shows why the student fits at that university. So. Their first sentence again, a good research career can only be built above the firm foundation of a good education. So that's a very clever way. Who wants a good research career? Well, this student. And what do they need? They need a good education. So what is Stanford's role? Their role is to be the bridge between the student and the education. And then, what do they want to do after they cross that bridge? Their long-term goal is to um, well, teach. They talked about teaching, right? So, but their immediate goal is to work uh, towards a PhD. So in your conclusion, you see this is very short. You don't need to mention, you don't need to go back and talk about the details. Just briefly summarize what you have, um, what you've mentioned before. We're going to have a relationship together, so I, I look forward to it.
So this, this uh, essay has all of the things that they need plus um, a little bit of confidence and higher level approach. Okay, so just a couple tips, overall tips on this SOP. What the admissions committee will look for, um, actually what they will not just read in your words, but what they will see through your words. Self-motivation, competence, potential. So, I'm going to go back to this last paragraph. So, if you write, oops, if you write your entire essay and you talk about just, I'm dedicated, I'm resilient, I have resolve. If you just write that, how can they believe you, right? Because you're just telling them, like, I'm special, I'm smart, you know? <laughs> and just because you say you're smart doesn't mean you know, there's proof. So this person offered proof, and then they say, hey, I showed you I'm smart, and I showed you I'm capable. So they're going to be looking for that, and you can really like, hammer it down with that strong language, too. Um, again, positive. Everything is positive, right? You don't want to complain about anybody, show that you, you know, well, I really wanted to go to this school, but the professor was not right for me. He was kind of a bad person. I never say you know, anything against another person, <laughs> another uh, a school. And demonstrate everything by example, right? Lots of details. Don't just say it, show it. Show how you're persistent. Once you show it, then you can say it. And go, oh, yeah, she's persistent, that's right. She, she showed me it, now she said it. Yeah, that's true. Make sure everything is linked with continuity and focus. Don't jump from one thing to something totally different. Okay, and if you do, you need to use a transition language. Um, there's lots of ways we can help with that, but there's lots of sites, so I would pay attention to how you move from one part to another. The personal statement, how many of you have, have written a personal statement? It's called the personal statement. So you, actually, can I ask you, you did SOP and the personal statement? Yeah, for college. Ah, okay. So they asked, did they ask for both? Yep. Okay. So um, what we found is that colleges will either ask for the statement of purpose or both. They don't usually just ask for a personal statement. And when you have to write the both, it's kind of, I don't know, your experience exactly, but it's a little trickier because you don't want to repeat yourself, but you also have a lot more room to focus the SOP on stuff that you did. And the personal statement, you have some flexibility to focus on what you love to do. So if you have a chance to do both, you'll see here, this is a little more personal. So. Uh, it's the personal statement to go with your statement of purpose. And if you, you can sort of follow along, it's not much here, but if you need any details. Um, mostly it shows the graduate faculty your personality. So it's like an introduction, right? And so they complement each other. They go together. So how do they differ? Uh, if you want to take a picture of these. But this is a very rough guy, right? So never just see a diagram like this and say, yeah, that's exactly the, the guidelines, right? Because sometimes the, the statement of purpose usually doesn't have guidelines, like exact words, word length, but personal statement will say, please don't write more than 500 words. Um, that whereas the statement of purpose focuses on academic details, uh, in your CV and transcript, this is like you'll use the academic details in your personal statement, but you'll focus on the personal aspect. Like, how did this experience affect you? Because this at the top tier schools that ask for a personal statement, they kind of want to know more than just what are your grades. You know, because if if you apply to Stanford or Harvard, everyone has good grades, right? Everyone. So. Um, they need to know like, what makes you tick, right? They want to see that like, you're a real person. Um, this is a little more academic in tone, not like a research paper. This is more candid. So there's a lot more emphasis on um, maybe a personal story. You can tell a little bit more story. And whereas this is heavy emphasis on school program, the school you're applying to, this is more emphasis on life story, interests, goals, experiences. Okay, so 
So um, I, since we don't have much time, I just want to go through these components. I don't want to look specifically at the example. So you need to have a clear narrative. A narrative is a story, right? So you're telling a story. The best way to this is a good chance to impress the faculty, graduate faculty, because you they get to see all the things in your resume, but here you can really like kind of brag or show something that's special about you. The SOP is not a lot of room to show your, your like special, your awesome qualities. This is a good place to do it. So you all, you also show how you're a good fit, and it should be strong writing. But um, uh, many schools don't have personal essays. So it's not the not the most important component. And always follow the instructions, right? the fourth time I said that, I think. <laughs> okay, so the last thing we're going to discuss today is letter of recommendation. How many of you have had a letter of recommendation written for you? Have you ever had to ask for a recommendation? You know, if you've been to grad school, but also if you have to go to a, a workplace or a transfer jobs, it's very similar. Um, in, we're going to talk about what you need, but also how you can maximize, sort of get the best letters of recommendation, right? Um, so there's a lot of information here, but I want to focus on how you can like, sort of improve that. So what is a letter of recommendation? We'll talk about who should write it, what needs to be included, how you should ask someone, when you should prepare. Now these are all important, but there's not that much you can do about the what, because you can't write it, right? You're not going to write the letter of recommendation. Um, you can give it to us to edit it, but you can't like make, you can't put things in it. Um, so I want to focus on how and who. So we'll go through here. Okay. So if you don't know, a letter of recommendation is a detailed third-person discussion focusing on personal qualities, accomplishments, and experiences. So, if, uh, if you have a teacher, a professor write it for you, they, they talk a lot about how hardworking you are. They use the words of hardworking or um, uh, thoughtful or good attitude. And they also talk about your abilities and your accomplishments. Um, usually you need two or more. So that's important. Two or more letters. And, yeah, okay, same thing. So, uh, the people who you should ask, this is important. Um, usually, we get professors or um, employers uh, to write these letters, but they should always know you well. You shouldn't be, have taken their class for 10 times and then ask them to write it. They should know you really well. In, we can tell when they read it, oh, this professor really, really knows the student. Or, hmm, this student's really good at work. It's like, they don't really know you, so... The, the graduate program isn't going to be that interested. So it's better to pick, even if there's a really popular teacher or professor, better to choose a professor that really respects you, that even if the class isn't that important, it shows your good qualities. Uh, so, let's see. They could be, they should be superiors. They shouldn't be your colleagues, your friends, never your friends, or your family, right? Um, if you work there, they should be your boss. Or manager. And if they're respected as a professor or as a manager, that's even better. Uh, okay, let's get that. So we've, we've gone over these. Professors and employers are the best to write it. Okay, so what needs to be included? Details about you from more than one person's perspective. So we're not talking about one letter. Or think of that, about your letters as like stereo sound system. So when you listen to uh, a stereo, you don't listen to just one speaker, one side. You listen to at least two speakers, so you have a better idea of what the music sounds like. So when you're asking for these letters of recommendation, you want to find, even if it's two professors, find two totally different professors. So if you find one that in a class where you struggled, maybe, but you did a good job, you like really showed your work, but it's not your favorite class, or is it totally different class, like math and, um, I don't know, English. So just two totally different things that, oh, she did really well in both. Um, or an employer and a professor would be good. 
So you have two different perspectives about you, and that's I think that's more impressive than just two math classes. Maybe. Yeah. So um, I just talked about this. You want to give your referee. Referee is the person writing the letter. Give them the important information they need. So don't assume, like, you know me, write a letter. Okay, that's very nice if they do it, but help them out. Okay, so what you want to do is prepare a background information file. So you can do it that has all your important stuff and give it to them. And then they can say, oh, it's like a library. Oh, actually, I didn't know she did that, but I can, she can put that, or he, sorry, can put that in your letter that you, you work hard in class and you've won awards because of your hard work, um, even if they didn't know. I think I have told you that I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. 뭐 저거 다 준비해주셔도 좋긴 한데 제일 중요한 거는 이제 그 프로그램 어떤 데 지원하는지 얘기해 주시고 본인이 어떤 제일 많이 생각을 해보셨잖아요 이제 어떤 내용 써주셨으면 좋겠다 이렇게 쓰시는 게 좋을 거예요 그리고 저희 번역을 많이 맡기세요 저희한테 그리고 번역 맡기실 때 이제 다른 번역가들한테 해달라고도 하시거든요 왜냐면 말투가 달라지기 좋으니까 근데 저희가 그래서 이게 보면은 교수님들이 좀 이렇게 디렉트하게 안 써주시고 돌려 돌려 드리고 말씀해 주시는 경우가 많아요. 그러면 번역해도 이상하게 나오기도 하고 직접 받으셔도 좀 이상할 거예요. 그러면 한국에서는 시도서 쓰면 은 누구의 뭐 노고를 외치야 뭐 이런 식으로도 쓰고 많이 하시잖아요. 근데 말씀하실 때 미국 사람들은 좀 이제 좀 자신에 대해서 좀 디렉트한 걸 얘기를 해주기를 원하니까 그렇게 좀 써줬으면 좋겠다 라고 얘기를 해주신 게 좋고요. 그리고 어뭐 보면 제가 막 국회의원 추천서 받을 때도 있고 뭐 국무총리 추천서 받을 때도 있어요. 그러니까 네, 물론 그것도 좋긴 한데 이게 SOP 이제 대학원 그 프로그램에 따라서 다른 것 같고 그냥 MBA나 뭐 아니면 좀 경영 관련 쪽은 그런 쪽에 좀 지가 높으신 분 추천서 받는 게 좋긴 한데 근데 이제 뭐 이제 공대나 아니면 좀 이제 바이오 쪽은 아무래도 그 분야에서 가장 좀 많이 아시거나 전공 교수님한테 받으시는 게 제일 좋은 것 같습니다. 그래서 추천서 이제 작성하실 때 이게 누구한테 받으실지 되게 걱정하시던데 무조건 이게 좀 지위가 높고 뭐 잘해주신 그 높은 사람들을 하시는 거는 제가, 제가 받아보잖아요. 그러면 좀잘못 써주세요. 그러니까 겉으로만 이게 삼자 그냥 정말 이 사람 그러니까 다 보이거든요. 어드미션 어디서 볼 때도 이거 그냥 이 사람 잘 모른다. 그게 딱 티가 나요. 제가 봐도. 그래서 좀 그런 부분 좀 고려하시는 게 좋을 것 같다고 제가 그런 말씀 드립니다. 감사합니다. <웃음> Um, okay, so you also want to give them the, yeah, give them uh, all the details about writing it, not just your details, but when is it due? They need to know, right? They need to plan. They might be writing 10 other ones. Give them a copy of the recommendation forms, instructions, just, just make it easier for them because they will want to write you a good letter. That you're like, oh, she, you're an angel. You made everything easy for me. It'll, you'll have a better letter. So that's one way to maximize it. Um, you could ask many people to do it for you, but in some cases they have to, I don't know, in your case, if the professor sent the letter straight to the school, sometimes they have to. Okay, okay. Like, if you send it to the school, but the most important thing is to show the personal essay and the SOP. Because if you don't have any other things, 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 if you don't have any other 자기 정보랑 맞아야 되니까 다른 얘기를 하면 안 되잖아요. 그래서 SOP 쓰신 거 보여주시는 게 좋지 않을까 생각이 듭니다. 믿을 수 있으면 you have to trust them, right? If, if, you, if you don't trust them, you want to be able to have it. But I've read that there's a little more weight carried if they send direct confidential because then they know that you, tr they trust, you trust them. So it's like, oh, she didn't even have to read it. You know, she just sent it directly. So depends on the professor, so maybe they... Ask them about that too. Um, so I want, I want to say how you should ask them. Always be considerate of their time. Um, schedule an office appointment. I know maybe it's different in, in Korea, in Korean schools, but okay. Um, so give them time to write it. Like don't say write it like the next five days. It's not going to be a good letter, right? And I don't like maybe 
if, if a professor has to edit it for themselves or use an editing service, they need some time too. So whether they give it to you to edit or to you know, send it through us, we, we need some time to go through the process. Okay, so how to request a letter after time has passed. I think this is important. So if you haven't been in school for two years, it's good to remind them, send them an email, remind them who you are. Tell them your name and give them some details. Like, I was in your uh, business class in 2009 and I'm the one with the red hair and I was always saying crazy things and we used to talk after class. So make some friendly reminder of who you are and then give them your background information file and then maybe even meet with them if they want to, on the phone, talk to them. Because the personal connection is going to make your letter happen more. Like, you can have more feeling in the letter. Okay. Um, I think you know. They generally, give at least a month before the deadline, so everything can. Um, you can make sure everything is there, and then check out university resources. Wow, imagine that. To find out guidelines about LOR submissions, it's very important to follow these rules. You don't want to miss the deadline. Okay. And um, <clears throat> follow up with your uh, referee. So if you gave them the, the uh, if you asked them three weeks ago, and they said yes, you didn't hear, them, maybe remind them. Say, you know, I don't want to push you, but you know, my letter is due uh, in, three, in two weeks, so you know. So could you please respond and let me know how that's going? You want to know where all your documents are. Um, and last, I want to talk about some of the services. I've heard that maybe, some of our services as editors, I've heard that maybe there's a lot of clients, customers here, but if not, um, you know, we do a lot of admissions documents as well as research papers. So, uh, so we, what we handle is, we do grammatical, stylistic, and organizational issues in the writing. More of the first two, right? The organization is kind of like, we don't know, we don't want to change your paper or your document drastically. So that's kind of upon you. We, but what we do is we give lots of comments that explain the revisions that we made. We try to suggest further revisions, and we also ask critical questions so you can think about, you know, you may want to consider to do this, or is this what you need? So at our company, actually, at our, this business, we ask a lot of questions more than other editors do. I think that's kind of valuable to, to writers. Uh, we use track changes to show that all the edits. And clients are, customers are allowed to personally ask their editor questions about the revision. So you get one chance, and maybe, I don't know, the other service, premium services. <laughs> but, you, but you have a chance to follow up. So it's not like, here's your final edit, and it's all over you. I've had many people ask me a question and ask me to change something, and I think they, they appreciate that. So basically, it's kind of scary, <laughs> because it looks like everything is wrong, but really it's not. So the yellow is my, uh, my highlighting. I didn't do this uh, edit. <laughs> it's very old, and I'm not sure who did it. But, uh, but I just want to look at the statement of purpose and see what the student did compared to uh, the, the sample one we looked at. So they've taken a little different approach, right? For me, the purpose is the thing you know you want to do. In life. It's more like a, a storybook beginning, right? They talk about, I was frightened of animal experience. So they go way back. That's their hook. So they have, we see this more often. Um, we see either this sort of style in the SOPs, or people just say, I want to apply at your university. So either one, you kind of want to make it stand out. You don't want it to be just kind of, no, I've read it. Someone reading is like, oh, I've read a thousand of these today. <laughs> I don't want to read anymore. Um, so that's, I highlighted some, so being open to new experiences and overcoming my fears has made me realize this subject is my passion. So they've already focused on the motivations. Using transition terms, currently, previously, lets, kind of lets the reader, they don't know you, right? So they only have seen this much. Lets them know where you are in the essay and where you are in your life. What do you, where, where are these events fitting in? Recently, uh, let's see here. Just a little more, okay. So 
So at the beginning of their paragraph, they have a guiding a main idea. In pursuing a PhD program, I plan to apply my experience in mechanistic and ph physiologic research to bring in a unique uh, perspective. So they talk about their future goals. So they've kind of put it in a different order, which is it's okay. Um, and then they talk about why they're a good fit. I'm drawn to Duke's PhD program. They give lots of details. Specifically, Professor XX. Uh, and so they talk about the specific professor and their research. So. Um, and as you can see on the side here, the editor writes, can write uh, any comments about this paper. And I write a lot more than this, actually. A lot of editors will write a lot of comments because if your essay is, um, if we think there's things that you can improve, it's very it's interesting for editors to write comments. So if you send in an interesting essay, honestly, you'll get better, uh, you'll get better editing, I think, because editors are the same as the reviewer, the faculty. They want to like read something nice and make it a little better. They don't want to, like, oh yeah, I have to make this good, but it's better to really put a lot of effort into it when you send it. Okay, so that's, uh, that's pretty much all I have to say. So if you have any questions, at this time I'm open to, we're open to questions. So thank you for being patient. Yes, yes for SOPs, um, I just realized that it's not always good to, you know, talk about what things I've done so far. I, I, I measured the uh, evolution family with my SOPs, putting my CVs on the side by side, but, you know, they just, Obviously, they don't want. They wouldn't want to see things on CV on SOP, right? So it's 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 more like they. You can have those things on there. You just have to put them in a in the context. And you're not just saying, "In this year, I did this. In this year, I did this." That's you're really like putting that into. Why is it important? You know, it's like if you have a story about a, a biography about a famous person, right? And, and then you have an outline, like say it's a President Lincoln or something, and then you just it has like born this day and died this day, did this this. But if you read like a, a page about his life, it's a lot more interesting to see what that detail was, how it fit into his biography. So then you th think about it in terms of a story. Then those CV details are super important, but just don't list them, and they kind of have to fit into the story of you. Life, because for me, I have a lot more to talk mm -hmm. about my work experience than yeah. my academic history. So uh, I guess I have to spend a lot of time and a lot of uh, words for explaining the connections among my work experience. So I'm just asking you if I can uh, be really good and competitive enough to just elaborate my work experience other than the what is on CV. Yeah, um, if, so on the CV is only your education, most of the educational experience, so um, I think you have to, because they, they, they're going to see the holes in the years, and I don't know what your work was, if it's related to your major or not. Um, if it's related, then definitely you can use it to show how you're more prepared or something, but if it's not, then you can just explain yourself, and I think that can be more compelling, because it's really hard to go back to graduate school after doing work, like you know, real life work for years. So I think that doesn't, that shouldn't stop you, but you need to ex explain it. I have a program at the time. I have a work experience. I have a program at the time. I have a lot of work at the time. But I don't have any connection. I have a lot of work at the time. I have a lot of work at the time. I have a lot of work at the time. And I have a lot of work at the time. 예, 저 항상 얘기를 하는데 그 대학원 같은 경우는 방문도 많이 하잖아요 지원자들이 그 전화해서 너희 뭐 원하냐 어떤 내용 원하냐 이게 가출들이 많이 있어요 생각보다 그래서 나 그, 그냥 얘기를 하는데 저 한국 사람이고 나 어떤 대학교 다니고 있고 어떤 거 하는데 어드미션 에세이 쓰다 봐 이런 점이 궁금했다 뭐안 가르쳐 준 경우도 있거든요 근데 뭐 그래봐야 손해볼 거 없으니까 내 이름 얘기하는 것도 아니고 오히려 더 관심을 가졌으니까 더, 더 좋게 봐줄 때도 있거든요 그러니까 뭐 방문까지는 아니더라도 그냥 전 직접 전화해서 물어봐요 너희가 학교가 이렇게 이렇게 프로그램 이렇게 이렇게 있는데 내가 관심 있어서 지원하고 싶다 정말 근데 
내가 이런 이런 얘기를 했는데 사실 상대적인 거거든요. 이런 그 기, 기준 같은 거 어떤 데는 뭐 진짜 워킹 디프레스 더 좋아할 수도 있고 어떤 데는 정말 어, 학교에서 그 전에 뭐 했는지 중요하게 생각할 수가 있으니까 그냥 물어보는 것도 나쁘지 나쁜 생각은 아니에요. 
정치적이라든지 뭐 그런 부분을 쓸때 고려해서 쓰면 좀더 좋지 않을까. 물론 중립적인 게 제일 좋고요. 어, 그리고 해커스 가보면, 고해커스 가보면 거기 후기들 많이 남겨져 있어요. 어드미션 받은 사람들이 자기네들은 스펙이 어땠고 어떤 내용에 대해서 에세이를 썼다 이렇게 쓰는 경우도 있으니까 그것도 한번 보면서 확인해 보시는 것도 좋고요. 그리고 학생들 프로필 나와 있는 페이지들 있거든요. 그래서 프로그램마다 뭐 아시안이 몇 명, 그리고 아시안에서 그전 언더그래스에서 뭐 매저 어떤 사람들, 그러니까 그거를 고려해가지고 지원하는 것도 전략 중에 하나입니다. 어, 그리고 라이팅 스타일은 제가 아까 말씀드렸듯이 이제 돌려 말하는 게 제일 최악이고요. 제가 읽어도 뭔 소리인지 모르겠고 에디터들이 편집하더라도 무슨 소리인지 모르겠어요. 그게 정말 진짜 안 좋은 예고. 그러니까 너무 딱 진짜 원하는 거를 명확하고 구체적으로 쓰는 게 좋습니다. 겸손하게 쓰실 필요 전혀 없고요. 이사유, 이사유 쓰지 마세요. 예, 자신감 있는 어투로 쓰시고 그러니까 미국 같은 경우는 우리나라는 이제 글을 쓰다나 자기를 프레젠테이션 할때좀 되게 이렇게 면접을 보더라도 좀, 좀 공손하게 해야 될 그런 부분이 있잖아요. 근데 여기는 500단어짜리인데 겸손한 어투로 얘기를 하고 이사유 쓰면 은 자신에 대해서 어떻게 다 표현을 하겠어요. 그러니까 최대한 디렉터하고 자신감 있게 얘기를 하셔야 되고요. 그리고 이제 글을 쓸때 나는 잘하겠다, 몸을, 몸을 하고 싶다. 아까 케빈이 얘기하기도 했지만 그런 부분을 이제 나타낼 때 어, 자신은 어떻게 준비가 돼 있고 어, 이 과정, 이 프로그램을 통해서 어떻게 발전할 수 있나 이렇게 스토리를 끌어내는 게 굉장히 중요합니다. 예를 들어서 이제 그, 에서, 그 대학원에 진학을 할때 프로그램에서 과거 학부에서 했던지 뭐, 뭔가 있을 거 아니에요. 여기 지원하고 싶었던 그런 동기가 그런 걸 만들었어요. 지금 없으면 과거 연구랑 자기가 과거 연구에서 느꼈던 한계랑 그리고 거기 가능성에 대해서 간략하게 얘기를 해주시고 이 프로그램을 통해서 뭐 어떤 교수님이 어떤 연구를 했다든지 어떤 리소스가 있다든지 이 지리적 위치가 어떻게 도움이 된다든지 그런 거를 이제 더해서 이제 베스트 아웃컴이 나올 수 있게끔 스토리를 짜주셔야 돼요. 그러니까 제가 뭐 이건 진짜 자기를 팔아야 되는 부분이거든요. 어떻게 보면은 그래서 뭐 한국에서는 뭐 AI 뭐 공부를 했는데 약간 어 여기에 대한 연구가 아직 깊지 않고 수업도 별로 없다. 근데 난 여기에 대해서 관심이 굉장히 많았고 그리고 교수님하고 어떤 리서치도 했다. 학부생인데 불구하고 퍼블리시도 했고 뭐 어디 가서 컨퍼런스도 이제 참여를 했다. 그 다음에 이제 그런데 이제 불구하고 내가 여기서 이제 직장 경력을 갖기도 좀 어려운 부분이 있고 그리고 좀 원하는 연구진도 별로 없고 그래서 이제 만약에 샌프란시스코에서 뭐 스탠퍼나 보컬리를 가면은 거기에 유명한 교수님도 계시고 내가 진짜 필요했던 한계적인 이런 코스들이 있어서 어 정말 이제 내가 원하는 부분에 대해서 더 연구를 깊이 할수 있겠다. 그리고 거기에 있는 그 샌프란시스코에 샌프란시스코에는 뭐 스타트업도 많고 AI 관련된 기업들도 많으니까 인턴십이라든지 어떤 스페시픽한 프로그램을 또 써주는 것도 좋을 수도 있어요. 그런 프로그램에 내가 지원을 해놨기 때문에 같이 시너지 효과를 볼수 있다. 이렇게 스토리를 써주면은 좀 많이 좋을 것 같습니다. 그래서 보통 많이 쓰시는 게 어, 나는 뭐 하고 싶고 나는 뭘 좋아하고 뭐 이렇게만 쓰시는데 결국에는 이 학교가 어떻게 도움이 될지에 대해서 쓰시는 게 좋아요. 근데 이 도움이 되는 걸 그걸 그 쓰실 때 이제 학교에서 어떤 밸류를 되게 중요하게 생각하는 네. 뭐그 부분에 예를 들면 예를 들어서 서구 학교 같은 경우는 다이버시티 같은 걸 되게 중요하게 되게 생각을 하고 보통 인종 같은 경우도 버클리 같은 경우 50%가 아시안이에요 그렇기 때문에 진짜 이제 다양한 문화를 중요하게 생각을 하고 있죠 그 경험을 중요하게 생각을 하거든요 그래서 저는 사실 그런 내용을 썼었고요 근데 뭐 MBA를 이제 콜롬비아 MBA를 쓰신다 하시면 은 아무래도 저는 잘 모르겠지만 컬럼비아 대학교에서 좀 중요하게 생각하는 가치 그리고 합격한 사람들이 어떤 공통 분모를 갖고 있는지에 대해서 좀 연구를 하는 게 좋을 것 같습니다. 음... 요새 저희 그 SA랑 SOP 받으면서 제일 많이 나오는 토픽들이 있어요. 어떤 토픽일까요? 이거 좀 피했으면 좋겠다고 생각해서 말씀드리는 거군요. 박근혜 탄핵이랑 그리고 그 전에부터 계속 유행했던 토픽은 IMF랑 남자분들은 군대, 군대. 근데 이세 가지는 좀 이제 어드미션 오피스 봐도 좀 싫을 거예요. 제가 어필이 안될 거라고 생각을 하거든요. 물론 정치학 쪽이면 박근혜 얘기 써도 되고, 그리고 진짜 본인이 이제 뭐 박근혜 정권에서 뭔가 좀 탄압을 받았다 생각을 하면은 뭐 그러면 뭐 상관없는데 자신의 스토리랑 그러니까 매크로 상황이랑 유기적으로 연계하는 게 되게 중요합니다. 그냥 아, 박근혜가 우리나라에 있어서 우리를 이렇게 촛불 시위로 이렇게 했기 때문에 우리나라를 돌아와서 뭔가 더 바... 안 돼요. 제가 보기에는 전혀, 전혀 뭐 당연히 맞는 얘기지만 좀 와닿지가 않은 부분이 있어요. 자기랑 유기적으로 선택을 해야 되고 아까 그리고 아까 트랜지션 잠깐 얘기를 했는데 오늘 한국에서 문단 이어갈 때는 이게 그러나 뭐 하지만 뭐 이렇게 잘안 쓰잖아요. 
근데 꼭 트랜지션 뭐 대학 콜 아니면 뭐 엔드 이런 건 아니고 그런 거 많이 써주시는 게좀 읽기 편하게 왜냐면 가뜩이나 문장들이 좀 어색하거든요 한국 사람들이 그 ESL 학생들이 쓴 거는 네, 그렇게 해주시는 게 좋고 감정적인 컨텐츠 쓰지 마시고요 막 <웃음> 부모님이 물론 이게 통할 수도 있어요 어떤 면에서 근데 부모님이 뭐 이혼을 하셨고 누가 돌아가셨고 그리고 막 내가 너무 아팠고 좀 이거 그거 말고 좀 약간 좀더 그러니까 대학생일 때는 제가 보기에는 좀 학부 지원할 때는 좀 도움이 될 수도 있거든. 거기에 대해서 역경을 극복했다. 대학원이면은 제가 보기엔 좀더 프랙티컬한 내용을 쓰시는 게 좋지 않을까 생각이 듭니다. 에세이 이제 물론 써보신 분들 있지만 이제 아예 안 써보신 분들은 처음에 이제 어떻게 작성할지 되게 막막하잖아요. 그래서 제일 먼저 기본적으로 할 부분은 브레인스토밍 먼저 하시고요. 프롬트를 딱한 한 시간 동안 쳐다보시고 거기에 생각나는 단어들 다 이렇게 써보세요. 풍선 그리면서 여기 안 되는 게 뭐고 뭐고 뭐고. 이렇게 다 먼저 구성을 해보신 다음에 그 다음에 꼭 아웃라인을 먼저 쓰세요. 그냥 무조건 문장 먼저 쓰신 분들이 있는데 그러면 이제 첫 번째 문장이랑 마지막 문제랑 완전 다른 내용이에요. 그렇기 때문에 좀 유기적으로 연결하기 위해 아웃라인은 달랑마다 뭐 토픽 센텐스 쓰고 그 다음에 소프팅 센텐스 그 다음에 쓰고 그 다음에 이렇게 작성해 나가는 게좀더 나중에 봤을 때는 좀 이해가 가거든요. 그냥 아웃라인 다 써놓은 다음에 이제 여기서 이제 유기적으로 좀더 구성을 해보고 그 다음에 이제 문장을 넣으시면 되고요. 아까 말했듯이 이그잼플 꼭 넣으셔야 되고요. 이그잼플은 진짜 구체적으로 내가 토픽 센텐스에 왜 이게 얘기를 했는지에 대해서 이제 서포트를 해주는 거기 때문에 꼭 넣어주셔야 됩니다. 혹시 저희 그 교정 받아보신 분 있으신가요? 저희 하십니까? 김규빈님 안 계세요? 아, 안 계세요. 그러면서 이제 그 제가 아까 말씀드렸듯이 에세이는 에세이 에소피는 무조건 본인이 쓰시는 게 맞고요. 근데 본인이 쓰신 다음에 꼭 리뷰를 받으셔야 돼요. 그러니까 저희 프로필링 서비스뿐만이 아니라 교수님한테 아니면 친구들한테 아니 근데 엄한 사람한테 받으면 안 돼요. 이 잘못, 잘못해서 리뷰 받는 게 진짜 안 좋은 거거든요. 그래서 저 제가 예전에 에세이 쓸 때는 거의 한 10명한테 받았어요. 교수님들한테 받고 친구한테도 보여주고 그리고 뭐 프로필링 서비스도 당연히 쓰고요. 프로필링은 당연히 받아야 되는 거예요. 만약 오타나 아니면 은막 못하, 못하는 그래도 그렇다고 쳐요. 근데 뭐 문장이라든지 이런 부분에서 좀 어, 전달력이 떨어지면 확실히 가능성이 좀 줄어든다고 생각을 하거든요. 그래서 리뷰 같은 경우는 여러 번 가는 게 좋고 저희, 저희 꼭 프리프링 서비스 아니더라도 다른 데서도 뭐 하다 보고 자기한테 맞는 자기가 원하는 에이터 사는 것도 되게 중요하고요. 그래서 보다 보면 나중에 제일 고민하는 건 이제 20명한테 이제 프리프링을 받거나 아니면 이제 리뷰를 받았는데 내용이란 부분에서 얘는 이거 넣어라 안 넣어라 이렇게 다 달릴 거예요. 답은 없어요. 본인이 선택을 하셔야 돼요. 저희도 그렇게 얘기를 해요. 그래서 이런 거를 리뷰를 받더라도 본인이, 본인만큼 많이 고민해서 봤던 사람은 없거든요. 그런 이유 때문에 좀 결국에 결정은 자신이 하시니까 그런, 그런 기준은 이제, 이제 본인이 학교에 이제 리서치한 거라든지 그 어딤스 오피서가 얘기해줬다든지 그런 부분에 의해서 이제 결정을 하시면 되죠. 